So I just finished talking with a dear brother in the Lord about the sheer hypocrisy and danger of today's funerals. Yesterday, he attended the funeral of one of his relatives, a younger cousin who lived an absolutely wicked life. It was no secret to anyone. They all knew that this young man was wicked. Now, regardless of how the person lived, typically today's preachers will preach them right into heaven. Okay, It's just the politically correct or the respectful thing to do. And it's cowardice. That's exactly what it is. It's cowardice. But the question is, are they really in heaven? Okay, That's the question. And I want to show you guys a clip that Vody preached at the 2019 G3 conference where he pretty much tackled this very problem that we see in today's modern funeral. Vern Poitras paints a picture of this. And I'll say up front that this is a bit lengthy. And, and I wouldn't read this unless I believe that it was amazingly informative. He writes an article about two funerals. If you want to see what we believe about worship, go to a funeral. A young man I know died in a tragic accident. His death was utterly sad. At his funeral, his friends were all wearing t-shirts adorned with his picture. At the front of the church, were heaped up flowers, footballs, and stuffed animals. On top of his coffin was a picture from his senior prom. The service began with a recording of his favorite song, a heavy metal power ballad. The preacher gave a eulogy, praising how the teenager was such a good friend, such a good person, recounting some of the funny things he used to say, telling about the dreams he had for his life. Everybody in the church was crying. Then his best friend got up to say a few words. He was sobbing. He finally croaked out his goodbye as the congregation joined his sobs. His girlfriend recited a poem she wrote about how much she loved him. Then the boy's grief-stricken father had to get up in front of everybody and talk about his son. As if all this emotion were not wrenching enough, the funeral director next played a video showing highlights of the boy's life, his baby pictures, playing with his friends, enjoying Christmas with his family, waving at the cameras. There was not a dry eye in the house. People said, what a beautiful funeral it was. This is a living, breathing picture of the affective principle. This is a service that was not designed based upon what God says about himself. It was not designed based upon bringing clarity to who God is in light of this tragic event. It was a service that was designed with this young man at the center. And it was designed for the people so that they might have an emotional catharsis. Poitras goes on. Another funeral I attended was of another young person who died a tragic death, one that was even more senseless and terrible. She had been raped and murdered by a serial killer. I was one of the elders on duty. My job was to keep the news media away from the family. At this funeral, the congregation sang old hymns. They were in a minor key, but the lyrics centered on the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The grievers joined together in a responsive reading of the Word of God. The pastor, garbed in black, read more texts from the Bible. Instead of a eulogy, the pastor recited the facts of the girl's life, emphasizing her baptism, her catechism, her confession of faith, he described how she joined the church, her confirmation, and her regular reception of the Lord's Supper. The pastor, preaching from the Bible, gave a sermon on our travails in this wicked world, on how the Son of God entered our sinful condition, how in his sacrifice and his promises, we have a sure and certain hope that this poor child has entered into everlasting joy. The justice of God will be manifest, and so will his mercy. He will wipe away every tear. We sang some more hymns. The mood was sad 
and somber, but the word of God that permeated the whole service was like a lifeline, or rather, like a strong arm supporting us in our grief. Yes, we cried, but the funeral gave us strength. Do you see the difference between these two events? This was not a matter of preference. This was a matter of fundamental presuppositions. This was a matter of fundamental understanding about who God is and how we meet him in worship. On the one hand, there is the idea that says we need an emotional experience. experience. We need an emotional catharsis. We need to focus in on what it is that will create the environment that will allow us to feel the way we want to feel or we ought to feel or would like to feel and everything needs to be designed around that. And the other says, here's who God is, regardless of the circumstances. And here's what God says about himself, about worship and about death. 